A Van Gogh palette inspired by Van Gogh, I had to have it. Hello wonderful people and welcome. Let's take a close look at this Van Gogh orange palette that was inspired by Van Gogh the painter. For a while it was only available in the Rijks Museum itself, in the museum shop. A few months ago it became also available in other art supply shops and that's how I got hold on it. It differs from other Van Gogh palettes as it's orange. It looks fun and bright and I was so curious about it that I just had to try. In the past I have tested Van Gogh tube paints and another Van Gogh Frau Hölle palette too. They are so far my personal favorites when it comes to student grade paints. It's apparent that they are not professional, but for student grade they're very nice indeed. Now that we got that out of the way. The palette itself is just a standard Van Gogh palette with 12 pens and as always we ask ourselves why the big logo in the middle and not add three additional pen places there. They have that 12 plus 3 palette version in white so why not use that layout for all the palettes. I just think it would be a better move and less wasted space on the palette. In the lid you have a removable tray with six mixing walls that are nice and deep as well as a brush that is totally useless. Its weight is stiff and doesn't hold a lot of water. Different from my last palette, it's at least a round brush with a tip that could be used for details but it's not a good single brush to have in a palette. So for traveling I would recommend to get another brush that could actually hold water. I sadly lost the footage on unwrapping the palette, I'm very sorry for that. Instead I have pretty swatches for you and you will still get the whole info about it. Another thing about the brush, the little lever on the back does bend and can actually break when it's used how it's supposed to. To remove the pens from the palette, I use a different tool for that as my brush actually broke. But honestly. We don't buy the palettes for the brush, right? We buy it for the yummy precious paints, so this palette comes with 12 pens of opaque white, which has the pigment PW6, Naples Yellow Red, which are the pigments PY42 and PO43, Indian Yellow, PY83, PR264, Indigo, PB15 and PBK6, Permanent Lemon Yellow, which is PY184, Pyrrol Orange, which is PO73, Turquoise Blue, PB15 and PG7, Focus Green Deep, PG7 and PY154, Yellow Ochre, which is PY42, Burnt Sienna, which is PR101, Paints Grey, PBK6 and PV90. Seven of the colors are single pigment. When I first swatched it, I thought that there were too many yellows in the palette, but actually it all works out in the end. With the permanent lemon yellow, turquoise blue and metallic deep, you can have a nice primary triad with many mixing possibilities. The purples might turn out a bit muted, but I felt it was fine in the painting itself. Actually, and we're jumping ahead here, the mixes are really nice. So let's Break the usual order of the reviews and take a look at the mixing charts before we go into transparency, glazing and lifting and dispersion of the paints. In the mixing chart you can see that this palette is different indeed. You will have a wide range of colors, though the mixes are unusual sometimes. You get many bright colors but also muted versions and the possibilities with this palette are wide. I actually didn't expect the mixing chart to look that pretty and aesthetic from the palette itself. With the opaque white and Naples yellow red you will have a wide variety of pastel colors. The bright yellows, orange and turquoise will make your paintings shine, while the other colors create a nice contrast. There's a wide variety of possible neutral mixes too, and it all just adds up so nicely. If I could change something, I think you could exchange the paints grey, as the indigo is pretty close and can be muted down with the burnt sienna, but honestly I don't mind as Van Gogh was the inspiration for this palette. I can see some of his artworks being reflected in the color selection. The bright yellows and the turquoise that would create the pretty luminescence Van Gogh portrays in his art. During the last streams and off stream too, I was looking into articles about the actual paints and pigments he used and it was somewhat eye-opening to me. He used a variety of fugitive pigments because he sometimes could not afford the more expensive and more lightfast versions, but one letter was cited where he claimed to use a red on purpose which he knew will fade because he couldn't resist the brightness of the color. And it's a beautiful thought to have a color that is irresistible to the painter. 
The Meadow Lake Deep in the palette is a light fast version to paint with a bright red. That also means that the paintings we see now are ghosts from the past and do not look like Van Gogh has seen them. They are restoration works that copy the paintings and recreate the looks after a thorough pigment analysis and that was fascinating to me. A link to some articles is down in the description box. They're a good read, although fairly scientific. With this in mind, I feel like I can see a mix of paints that remind of the pigments Van Gogh used in his art, mixed with colors that remind me of the look of his art now, like the turquoise, which bit looks like the color that is left on the Iris's paintings, the faded ghost of the artwork. By the way, before I did the review, we had lots of chats and musings about the paints on the streams and the Discord server. I'll put the links down below as well, in case you want to join me for some art nerding else. Every creative mind is highly welcomed to join our curious hive mind. If you enjoyed the review so far, maybe sub for more reviews and art videos too. Back to the palette. Of course I did test the transparency too, and in the swatches you can see that the white, lemon yellow, ochre and nipple silver red and Indian yellow are semi-opaque. I too can see traces of pigments over the burnt sienna, hookah green, meadow lake deep and even turquoise. Still, the paints are good glazers, though the semi-opaque colors clearly show their character in the glazes and will be covering others. During the painting process, this was easy to adjust to, and I didn't mind this at all, personally. Opaqueness is not only a quality of paints, but also pigments, so this is something that will happen in professional paints too. If it's a quality you do not like in your art, which is totally reasonable and a personal preference, you might want to avoid these paints or opaque pigments in general. In case you need some help navigating the color world, check suncolors.com and use the filter for transparent colors. For me personally, this is helpful and I hope it is for you too. By the way, I'm making the database and I will add more of the Van Gogh colors soon that are missing right now. Support is highly appreciated if you find it a helpful tool. Thanks. When it comes to lifting another pigment quality, the Naples Yellow Red is the only one that is easiest to lift. Meadow Lake Deep, Burnt Sienna, Turquoise, Hookah's Green and Paints Grey will leave a mark on the paper, but still are liftable enough to add highlights. Yellow Ochre, Indian Yellow, Lemon Yellow and Indigo, on the other hand, are staining colors, which will hardly lift, so that may be something to be aware of during the painting process. The dispersion test shows that the most of the colors don't move much in water. I honestly did not expect them to, but it's nice to see it. They will move some in the painting though, as you can see in the actual painting I made with these, but definitely need some help with it. Yellow ochre, orange and turquoise were the ones that moved the most in my test, while the others pretty much stayed where they are, so if you like flowy paints, these might not be for you. Yet, if you like detailed paintings where the paints don't move much, which happens a lot too, these could be for you. The way they move actually reminds me a little bit of Holwen somehow. In conclusion, I have to say that I enjoyed this palette more than I thought that I would because of the mixes in the background. The research to actually review this palette led me to new knowledge about Van Gogh, the artist, his paintings and the pigments he used. I learned it to appreciate the color selection of this palette more and would have loved to see the thoughts of the people who curated it. On the Royal Talent site itself, I couldn't find any mention of it, sadly. Same goes for the Rieks Museum, where it was formerly sold in the museum shop. Of course, you can recreate this palette from paints you already have in your selection and see if you like the choices made there. The special thing is actually the orange plastic pound the paints come in. The color is a nice and bright and unusual for the Royal Talents palettes. The color selection is much better curated than a limited edition pink Frau Hölle palette, which I reviewed earlier on this channel. I do like the size, although I still wish they would just add the three extra pens in the place where there is a logo currently. By the way, I checked my palette does not open by itself and close pretty nicely and securely. But I have another Van Gogh palette, a white one, of the same build and that one does open pretty easily when shaken. So there are differences and I can't vouch for that. In a pocket it would be pretty safe as a travel palette I believe, but could use some extra support when thrown loosely in a bag. Whether it's worth buying is your personal decision. I do like the Van Gogh palettes and will eventually fill them with other paints when these are used up. The orange palette looks like a limited edition, so it's a collectible I guess. 
There are great paints for beginners and this palette is versatile enough to get into watercolor without having odd mixes. But of course, there are student grade paints and if you have a collection of professional paints already, these are by no means a must have for you. How do you feel about the palette and the mixes and the color selection? Would love to hear your opinions in the comments. Have a great and creative day everyone and I hope to see you soon. Bye!